Welcome to Grow As We Grow number four. This is a perk membership video series. I tour my garden and I incorporate videos of members that follow me on YouTube and are, that are part of the perk membership series. I want to start here. I am really transforming my garden and my landscape into a edible landscape, slowly but surely incorporating more and more uh, edible plants. These are day lilies, and I just want to stress that day lilies are edible, not lilies in general, but day lilies. Very, very hardy plants. You can grow them just about anywhere. Full sun, partial shade, come back year after year. The flowers are absolutely delicious, and they've got a nice um, consistency to them. They're not light, you know, where you just kind of like papery and, and disappear. They have a crunch to them, and they taste a little bit like cucumbers. But nice, heavy flowers that are a wonderful addition to stir fries, to salads, but you definitely can eat daylilies. I'm thinking about what other plants that I can bring into here that flower but are also edible. And I'm looking for flowers that have some substance. I don't want any, you know, papery flowers that look nice, but you know, you eat them and you can't really tell you're chewing on them. But daylilies have a crunch to them. Cleaning up this space, I just put the mulch down today, trying to maximize every place that I can grow something, I want to grow something. This is my mint patch, well contained in there, easy to manage. You always want to contain mint. This is a uh, Hardneck garlic, I've got some peas going. I just cleaned up this space. This is terrible, I hate it. <laughs> it's cocoa core mulch. I've had it sitting there for a year. Finally broke it up. It's, in my opinion, not really worth getting. This is the shredded hardwood, just real quick. I love that. Not too crazy about that. Anyway, I cleared out this space. I'll be putting in some beds, and I'm going to use, this is a frame that was, it was for a cold frame, but the plastic got destroyed. And what I'll be able to do is drop that cold frame over the beds that I'm gonna be putting into here. There'll be some sort of metal raised bed. And then I can put shade cloth over it if I wanna grow cool crops longer into the season. And I'll be able to drop a painter's tarp, clear plastic over it, if I wanna kind of make a little low tunnel and grow some warm crops longer into the season. But I'm looking to really maximize the growth. I don't really have to introduce this video. Rebecca does a wonderful job of showing you how to set up a no-dig garden. So let me show you her video, and I really recommend where you have some space, try out the no-dig garden. Australian woman named Maura Gamble uh, teaches on her YouTube channel. I have made several beds with this method and it works great. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this green area and we're going to whack the weeds down as low as we can get them. So the broad fork. It's great for opening up the ground. I'm sticking it in. I'm loosening up the soil just a little bit. All right, so my next act, I'm just going to take this compost Put it on the ground, like this. All right. Yep. There we go. The good thing about this method is you don't have to do it all at once. You can do it in stages, which is useful because generally speaking, I'm out here doing this by myself and uh, I run out of energy after a while. And today I'm actually gonna run out of compost. <laughs> is actually make a weed barrier. Most no dig methods and so several that I've used, use the cardboard on the bottom as the weed barrier. This method flips it over. You notice that I put the compost straight on the ground. Now I'm going to put the weed barrier on top. And you need about 10 layers of newsprint. You can also use brown paper bags. This is like making paper mache. You soak them. And we're gonna start up at this top end and we're just going to put it straight down. Oh, I forgot one important thing. Shut the camera off. One important thing. Before you put the weed barrier on, I forgot this, just give your compost a little wet down. So it's kind of like a shingle effect. This I will actually put under that other mulch and I'll pull this um, edge mulch over top of this edge to keep it nice and weed, weed free. When you go to plant, I'm going to top this with about six inches of hay or straw and uh, then it's going to sit. You could plant in this right away. I like to let it sit and marinate for a little while. And I'm going to probably plant this bed up starting the end of end of April or in May. It's going to be mainly perennials, um, but I'm also going to 
maybe put the snake plant over here, the snake. This layer is going to keep that any weed seeds or anything that's down way below, it's down below. It's not gonna get light. And so it's not gonna grow. You know, you're not gonna have the grass and things from this field. So this is gonna be my mulch barrier. It looks super thick right now, but it will just keep on composting down. It's really cool. And the beds are so rich because, you know, the soil here is hard and the grass in this hay field, you know, the roots are go down like this. So when you go to dig, you've done this now, so when you go to dig, it's really hard work. This just makes, instead of tilling all that, this makes use of that. And in a minute, I'll show you what the soil underneath, way down where the roots used to be, look like. Hey, Becky, when you're ready to plant, do you just, you try, it's so easy. Um, you just pull this apart. You take your spade and you poke a hole through the newsprint, plunk your plant in. This is my original no-dig garden. I think, Rebecca, you did a wonderful job presenting how to, to build a no-dig. And I do, again, highly recommend people try it out. I have potatoes in here, I have onions in here, and those are actually globe artichokes. I haven't really harvested the artichokes to eat. I just love the, the flowers. They're absolutely beautiful. They look like they belong underwater, like some sort of sea anemone. If you've not grown artichokes before, let them bloom, at least a couple of them, because the flower is amazing, and the bees just literally swim in the flower. Out here, I have rabbits come in. I have a little bit of protection around this fence with three le uh, three levels of polycords and bells on there. It actually does stop the deer from walking into here. They might poke their head in and eat a couple of things, but potatoes, onions, garlic, they tend to leave alone. I did have to protect the globe artichokes, and then I'll be cleaning this up for some different things. Peppers in there, not sure what I'm gonna grow back there. I do have open space out there and some of it's going to stay open because my wife doesn't want me to transform every inch of the two acres into something edible. But I am really maximizing where I have beds growing to incorporate stuff that you can eat. I want to walk around this way. We're going to show the second video. We only have two for this uh, Grow As We Grow number four this time. But Linda is taking care of her backyard, which is a sloped garden. She's kind of getting that ready. Things are waking up and she's maximizing really the space around her house. When we, well, when you guys watch the video and I put it in here, she asks a question, what to do? She has a beautiful trash can full of leaf mold. And this is the same thing that you see here. Those are my trash cans. However, I have holes in it, it drains. And hers just got really saturated. Just put it on a tarp out in the sun and let it start drying out in about, really, anywhere from three to seven days, depending on how much sun you have. You're gonna be able to incorporate this all over your garden. You're gonna be able to use it in the containers. Maybe you're talking about growing potatoes. But if you've got waterlogged compost, leaf mold or whatever, I just drop it on a tarp and I let it dry out. I want to take you over to my smaller garden. Um, let's actually go over to the mushroom garden because people have been asking about that. Oh, there we go. My shadow in the video. So this is where I'm growing wine capped mushrooms. And this is just hay. Wine caps love to grow in shredded hardwood. They can grow in hay, um, decaying materials, decaying shredded hardwood, hay, etc. This is going to be another way to bring food to my garden, you know, in a place maybe that wouldn't grow a whole lot because once the trees behind me come in, there's a lot of shade here. Mushrooms love the shade. They just need moist soil. And if you are going to build a mushroom garden, you might want to shade it a little bit. Make sure you put holes in the structure, let water fall in there. But I'll be doing a whole video on harvesting and taking care of the mushroom garden. So we are into, let me get a view from back here. We are into the back corner of my garden. A lot more shade. I have some metal raised beds, fabric pots. These are ramps that I ordered uh, last year from Etsy. And I thought that they died, but they're coming back. They kind of taste like garlic um, and onions. If these weren't protected, I just throw some fencing right over it. 
animals would come and eat those down. These are going to sit here and just establish and grow this year and next year I'll be slowly harvesting ramps through the garden. We're going to go inside to my little garden there because it's my Portugal garden now. I have ginger in here covered over because ginger does like the warmth. April, today's actually April 9th, the videos that were sent in were really, you know, towards the end of March. It's a little bit too cold so I'm using really matted down hay to keep the warmth in there so that the ginger roots and you know hopefully I get a nice big rhizome down the line. These are my compost tumblers. All the compost in there is going to be incorporated into containers. Let me show you Linda's video. She's doing a lot on her sloped property getting it ready to grow and she's really maximizing the space and she does have a little uh, compost tumbler and a place as I mentioned to make leaf mold or you know, leaf grow as we call it here in Maryland, or basic old leaf compost. She's really maximizing her space and, you know, I think it looks wonderful. Hi everybody, this is Linda. This is my garden in Staten Island, New York. Today is March 26th, 2023. And I'm just beginning to come back out here to do some work, to get my beds ready for this for the spring, um, for the spring season. This is where I, I um, plant my flowers, vegetables, berries, and my herbs will be planted here in this garden. The herbs are gonna be primarily planted in this green stalk tower. Uh, last year, I had it against the fence on the other side but it didn't get a lot of consistent sun there, I would say. So I think it'll be better this year in this area. Um, this year also, I'm going to be doing something different. I'm going to be using the planters that I have down here to plant some different vegetables. Maybe my potatoes. I'm not sure what else maybe some herbs i'm not sure but i i have two other ones that i'm going to be moving from the front of the house and i'm going to be putting it back here and i will just move over and show you this is where This is where I'm going to be planting a lot of my, I think, vining vegetables, tomatoes, peppers, zucchini, um, I'm not sure what else, but anything, anything else that I have that might need some kind of trellising, I'm going to use this, this bed and that bed over there, which also has on the other side. And I might keep it here because it did so, so pretty well, I think. Um, I have my strawberries here and these are my blueberry plants over here. And as well from last year, I have my Egyptian walking onions on the other bed. And this is, um, this is saffron right here. So a lot of my work so far has been trying to, um, well, I just started actually, but I'm pulling up some of the leaves because the leaves are very thick and matted on the ground. I put down some, um, after I picked up some of the leaves, I put down some granular fertilizer on half, well, maybe a quarter of the bed. So I have a bit much more to do. For this whole other side and at the top as well but it takes a little while so this is my porch where i hope to be enjoying some of this work more than i did in the past and i'm just going to walk around here to show where i'm going to be composting and i haven't figured all of this out yet and also i'm going to be installing a drip irrigation 
in a system that I grew up last year, but I didn't put in. So this is a composter that has stuff in it since I think it's over a year. And this is leaf mulch, which has been here for, this might make two years now that it's been here. Unfortunately, I had it covered and there's no holes in this container. So there's gonna be some way that I'm gonna figure out on how to dry it. But I'm glad I have it. And then the only other thing I think that we're gonna be doing next, uh, new for next year is that we're gonna be um, using part of our front lawn, if you will, it's very small, but to grow, we're gonna be using it to grow melons. So that's my garden. This is where I am on March 26th. And I'm looking forward to doing more of the work and getting my garden back together again. Thanks a lot. I don't know if you caught it, but one of the things that I like that Linda said is that she's gonna try and spend more time on her back porch. You know, the benches are facing up towards the garden and maybe just enjoy all the work that she's doing. So this is my smaller garden. We just walked through um, my muscadine tunnel. I'm gonna have muscadine vines growing over that. Let me bring you right in here. So this is where I'm growing all of the seeds that I got when I went to Portugal. And I just, you know, sowing, direct sowing. I've got some tomatoes and peppers going indoors. They're just starting to break the surface. But a fun idea is to set up themes, I think, for your garden. So this is gonna be all the seeds that I purchased in Portugal. And in fact, I had to translate them. And when I translated one of the lettuces, it translated to bib lettuce, which I'm growing everywhere already. However, the rest of the seeds are really varieties that yes, you can get them in the United States and other places, but they seem to be the more of the common um, varieties they choose to grow there. It's different tomatoes, different peppers, different beans. So I think that's gonna be kind of cool. So I'm gonna just fill this whole space up with um, the seeds that I got from Portugal and I think it'll be a lot of fun. Let's take a walk into the main garden real quick. And if you're interested in perk memberships, please check out the video description for links or just look on my YouTube channel for the join button. The perk memberships are really about teaching. They're live events. I do uh, four or five Q and A's for an hour or so each month. A couple live classrooms, this Grows We Grow series. Um, and then I'm also gonna be doing a new series for the first tier or the first level of perk memberships where people can send in video questions. I will answer them live like this, probably do a premiere. Um, I'm just building up the perk memberships, but it's really about teaching and helping people have a better garden and some people prefer to learn in a small chat room you know maybe there's 20 or 30 of us at a time and I can really answer all your questions I like this space I am using the weed whacker as I said in my garden ramblings to shape this I'll be putting down mulch soon all my garlic is staying out here onions herbs things that the deer will leave alone and that's part of the strategies over time you know I'm learning where things grow the best moving things around and just really taking care of taking care of the needs of the plant. Know where to put them and they're gonna thrive and they're gonna do a whole lot better. And we'll just do a quick walk down, just showing you where I am with different plants. Most of the cool weather stuff is in. I've consolidated all the plastics that I use to really get everything that you see now germinated early. I was just basically laying plastic down that you just saw over the soil weighting it down with stuff just like that pieces of firewood and it heated up the soil sped up germination so i'm was able to get you know my first wave of radishes are going to be ready in about three or four days from today i have white icicles black spanish radishes and just want to show you some of the options this is a layer of leaves cardboard grass same thing in here these beds are really more for my warm weather crops however i'm growing some broccoli in there they're not going to be really ready to be planted with the tomatoes squash cucumbers and peppers till later but getting down the mulch now getting the beds fertilized if you need to do that 
they're just going to sit here a couple of weeks, warm up. There's no weeds. It's going to be really nice. These are metal labels. I actually sell these at my seed shop. I'd like to really test out the products that I sell. These stayed out under weeds, under snow, mixed into all the mulch. And it's really cool because, one, it's not plastic. So you're not getting those plastic things all over the place. This will rub off with the sock. This is just a grease pencil. And I will relabel all these for my tomato plants, clean these up. But these are just a nice way to label everything in your garden and you can use them year after year. If you take care of them and bring them in, they're not gonna rust like this. But these were put to the test. They're pretty cool. If you're interested in them, you can find them at my seed shop. And that's what I use for my peppers, for my tomatoes, for labeling everything. Peppers are all good to go. Actually, they go right into my sunken container garden right over there. That's got to be cleaned up. And they're going to go right into that space. Tomatoes are going to be in here. One of the things, maybe we'll end with that, is you're going to be trying out different things in your garden. And for instance, this is year number four of my brown mission fig. And I've wrapped it a couple of times. It always grows tons of leaves, but it's just not getting fig. So I'm giving it one more year to produce, and then I'm going to either cut it back and remove it and get rid of it, or I'm going to try and put it into another spot. But sometimes, you know, what you try in your garden isn't going to be a success. There is nothing wrong with that. And I will move that fig maybe to a different place. However, it gets a ton of sun right there, so I'm not sure where to get it more warmth here and my feeling is is that the winters here in Maryland just get too cold even when I wrap it that it just kind of dies back and just regrows leaves and I'm just not going to get figs. Blackberries are looking good. This is kind of where we started and grow as we grow uh, number three when I was doing the tour and I just want to show you how beautiful the blueberry bushes are. The blackberries are incorporated in there. This is my fruit garden which I've cleaned up. I can see bees coming in and you know i'm having a good time and i want to just leave with a message you know you could see the work that rebecca was doing setting up a new bed and linda's getting her place ready slow and steady just you know do what you can a little bit each day a little bit each week slowly transform your garden over to what you want it to be it doesn't have to be perfect it just has to be a place where you you know have a lot of fun where you can share it with family, friends, and, you know, neighbors. Enjoy the garden. Thanks so much for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com. And if you're interested in perk memberships, check out the video description. Thanks again for watching.